big step. Um, I, I thought uh, I thought he did a much better job competing tonight. Uh, I thought uh, he uh, had an edge to him, which I liked. Um, you know, might not been his best stuff, but I still felt the fastball played. I thought there were much better changeups tonight. Um, you know, that fourth inning, how we navigated that, I thought was uh, was big for his confidence. And uh, you know, gave up a two strike homer on a slider to uh, Walker, who seems to always get us at some point. Um, and then he, he, you know, reset. I like the way he was able to reset uh, for that fifth inning uh, to give us a little bit of length. And then um, you know, at that point in time, I just felt where his pitch count was up, the emotions that he was going through. He gave us what he had, but uh, certainly a, a step in the right direction for Bob. What did you like about just the at bats there? I I just think all night long. I, I think uh, you know, all night long when we fought, we took good at bats, and then um, just not relenting, and, and uh, just the fight from the guys. And obviously, earlier Gavin had a good walk, um, but right there, Will getting a hit, with two outs, and then obviously Freddie coming up, two strikes. Seawall, who hasn't really given up a run all year, uh, to shorten his swing and to get a base hit, and obviously with Teo, man, it's like he doesn't run from those spots. And so, if there's anybody you want up to bat, you know, he's right at the top of the list, and uh, he made him pay. Where, where does that come from with the lineup? Is it something like you guys have done kind of repeatedly here lately, putting together these late rallies? Is that just like a mentality thing, or, or where do you attribute that to? You know what, I don't know. Um, it doesn't help my quality of life, waiting for the seventh inning to come alive in the bass. Um, better late than never. Um, I, I don't know. Um, obviously when the game is on the line, the focus gets a little bit more sharpened and um, guys seem to take a little bit better bats, which is ironic because you're facing specialists at the back end of the game. Um, but I think that's where, for me, you know, you expect more from our guys from innings one through six, um, where you see a starter more than once. But uh, you know, when it matters, they do come alive and they keep fighting. And regardless if we won that game or not, there was fight till the end. Were you thinking they might walk Freddie with the base open? Yeah, you know, um, you know, it would, obviously, you know, you pick your poison with Freddie or or uh, Tasker, um, Seawolf's their guy, and so. You know, with the closer, it gets hard to feel like you're giving up um, and not trusting your closer. So I'm sure Tori had his reasons. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it, I think it's something that uh, we'll look back this year and say this was the inning that kind of he bowed his neck and uh, made pitches when he needed to. Um, and, you know, got, got through that inning and kept going. Um, you know, but for me, that was all compete. It wasn't about the mechanics. It was about trying to keep your team in the ball game. And um, he did that. So I, I certainly think that's something that he's going to build off of. And, and I'll kind of remind him of that, too. Sort of to that, like, how much does he sort of build back mentally, as opposed to, like, along with physically, just to come back? You know, I mean, the, the physical is something you can kind of tangibly talk through, um, but the mental is something that you just really don't know, and um, you've got to see it to, you know, to really trust it. And I say that in the sense that you're in rehab mode, you're focused on trying to get healthy, but then when you're pitching in big league ball games, you know, it's more than you're, you're, you got to be well beyond rehab mode. It's compete and execution. And, find a way to get the job done. And so that's a different level. And uh, it takes being in big league games to do that. So I think today was a big hurdle for him. So Tommy, now that's 10 home runs, I think, the last 14 games, does it feel like automatic now? I, I, yeah. Every time the ball's up in the zone, I feel like it's going to be hit out of the ballpark. And a guy throwing 100, 102, um, probably hadn't seen him <coughs> a couple times, and then he throws one slider that's up in the zone and he deposits it in the right right center bleacher. So um, I just think this is who he is, man.
I mean, it's just like if he just stays disciplined like he has been, I, I just don't think there's a better hit on the planet. Dave, can I was kind of Japanese culture, how much more electric did it make that 7 moment? You know, it, it's it's one of those things. Shohei is very storybook. Um, you know, it seems like whenever there's anticipation for something to happen, it happens. And guys like that are like Michael Jordan or Tiger Woods. And so it just, you look back at the classic or, you know, him versus Trout that one when, when he was uh, you know uh, pitching and it's like you just don't know um, and then Japanese Heritage Night obviously you've got so many people from Japan here and then he comes up huge it's just like it's it's very historical for me and he told us that uh, he thinks he's probably not going to participate in the home run derby that he had some conversations just kind of wondering if you were you know uh, involved in those conversations at all you know, I think he cited like rehab also being the bottom of the swings. You know, I, I just think that, like I said, I, I, I've, you know, the, the reason he came to the Dodgers was to win a championship. And um, it's not solely his responsibility to um, carry Major League Baseball. And so he is a guy that is very in tune with his responsibility and the fact that he started an All Star game participated in the home run derby before for the fans um, but he is going through rehab and uh, his job he signed up to play for the Dodgers and to take care of himself the best way he can and so I think in any other normal situation um, where he wasn't rehabbing I think he would love to participate but then you layer it on something that is something so unique to anyone, the volume of swings, the intensity of it. Um, it would just be a real disappointment for not only Shohei, the Dodgers, and also the fans if something were to happen during something like that, which is an exhibition, essentially. Um, so I know that you know it's weighed heavy on him, but I do think that the, um, the rehab process is something that kind of ultimately you know, makes them feel better about bowing out. Um, but him alone playing, he's done a lot for the game of baseball, obviously. So was this more of the home run derby maybe interfering with the rehab, or was there a fear that the rehab might cause him to get hurt in the home run derby? No, it's more of uh, the, the former. Um, it's just, he's very regimented, and, and when you're playing every day, you know, alongside the rehab, it's very, again, regiment. And so now when you have an outlier situation as, as far as a home run derby, that's something that no one's prepared for. And so we have to be very mindful of that. And again, his job is to be a ambassador for the game, which, Sorry, he, I don't... which he does um, <laughs> every day. Um, but like I said, it's just not his responsibility alone to carry the game in baseball because he does it on a daily basis. Was this his call or was this a... This was, uh, I mean, I, I think it was a group kind of discussion. Um, and I think that I, I respect it and I'm sure everyone else, as disappointed as people might be, respected. And, uh, you know, again, he signed up here to help us win a championship and nothing should uh, get in the way of that. When you guys are talking about that, like, can you feel that push and pull with him? Absolutely. No, no player moves the needle um, in baseball more than Shohei, as far as on a global scale. And so that responsibility he feels or weight is real. Um, so yeah, I, I felt it. I feel it. Thanks, guys.